All right, so I'm here today with Lisa Marshall, who just, we just published her book, Oh, Hello, Alzheimer's, a few weeks ago. Lisa, how are you today? I'm terrific, Liz. How are you? Doing great. Good. It's Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's great to see you. Um, so your book has done incredibly well uh, since, since we launched, and it, it's a testament to um, how much this story is needed um, in the world today. And thank you for writing this. And I'd love to hear from you. It's a story of a love story between you and, and Peter and his diagnosis of early onset Alzheimer's and you being the full-time caregiver. It for is. Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, will you share a little bit about what, why you wrote the book about this? What inspired this? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it's twofold. Number one, there was really a need for it, as you mentioned, because there's not a lot of information out there on how to handle uh, a lot of practical things that happen on the journey of early onset Alzheimer's. Now, the book is geared towards any dementia and also just um, a really great read on love, too. But I had to write the story. Um, I, I author an international blog on Facebook and I chronicled our entire story from diagnosis to Peter's death through the almost four years. And it just, it just felt natural to put it into book form so that people would have a roadmap and a guide. And I wanted to share all the tips and tricks that I learned from other people or developed on my own, things that I found were important um, so that I wouldn't have any regrets at the end. And so I just freely share those, you know, all of the information that I learned along my own journey. Mm -hmm. And I, what I love about your book is that it is, it's very, um, you don't hold back, right? You share very, uh, right? The intimate details of your relationship and all of what transpired during that, as well as, so we really get to know you and Peter through the, through the story. So it feels very real. And you give really good advice throughout it of, way, of tips and ways to help people that are ca taking care of their loved ones which, which helps the loves, loved ones and their whole family. That's um, really the goal. Yeah, yeah, which is that's, amazing. That's really the goal is to ultimately help the person who has the disease, mm -hmm. um, any dementia. And, but, you know, we focus on Alzheimer's in the book, but, you know, by, by teaching caregivers to take care of themselves and insisting that they take care of themselves, they're going to be more patient, they're gonna be kinder, they're gonna be more gentle with their loved one. And they're gonna see what's important and what's not important right now and to be very present. So ultimately that helps the care, helps the person with Alzheimer's. I'd like to hear a little bit about what the experience was like for you in writing mm -hmm. the book. Well, there were days that I could write and write and, you know, from sun up to sundown, there were days that I couldn't write at all. I was, it was just too hard. And there were days where um, I put chapters off that I knew I was going to struggle with and I would write for an hour and then I would just have to go do something else because I was just so distraught reliving some of those memories that I had repressed. It was kind of like, you know, picking off a scab and then, you know, it's starting to bleed again for lack of a better analogy. But um, it was very, it was very therapeutic. It was very cathartic, but it was also very, very difficult. And I was extremely relieved when it was over. Yeah. Yeah. I remember talking with you right after at that point when we were starting to plan out the publishing part yes. and just, it felt like, oh, I did it like a huge weight off yes. of you. Um, and I, I just here publicly want to acknowledge you for pushing through that and making Thank that you. happen. Cause you know, it could have very easily stopped you from, from continuing and writing and it didn't. So good work for everything that you brought to that. Thank um, you. and from the outside, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. It looks like it was worth it. We've had a huge response from the readers. We've got yes. multiple bestseller love to hear from you, um, we had a review, right? You wanted to share um, 
from yeah, someone. Yeah, this, this yeah. review, I was, I was just looking on Amazon and I read this and I don't know who, the, I didn't know who this person is. It's a, a follower of the blog and I read it and I just immediately started crying because this review is exactly why I wrote the book and what I want to accomplish moving forward. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it if that's okay. <clears throat> it says, if you are caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's or dementia, this is a must read. I love this book. I plan to reread parts of it throughout my own journey as a caregiver to my husband with early onset Alzheimer's disease. Lisa's story was not only beautifully written, but it inspired me to rethink many of my own struggles with this disease. Since reading it, my husband and I have had a complete transformation in this journey. <clears throat> I know he feels more loved, confident, and safe than he did before I implemented things learned from reading this book. That, like, that's everything. That's everything. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It just warms my heart. It's exactly why I wrote it. Yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. Yeah. It's so needed right now. Um, I want to, another thing I want to talk with you about is um, you talk about how you were inspired to write this, but you also talked with Peter about writing this too. Well, when I, yeah, when I started the blog, you know, all those years, all those years ago, four years ago, um, you know, I would say to him, is it okay if I share this? And I would read every single, you know, thing that I was going to publish to get his permission. And I knew that the, I knew that the details of the journey were going to be more and more gruesome, if for lack of a better word. And so I wanted to continue to get his, his, um, his permission. And as the disease progressed, there was one day that um, he, he gave me his outright position permission. And I knew then that I had to carry on the torch. So the book is really, I wrote it, but it's, it's, it's really what Peter wanted to do. He wanted to create awareness about Alzheimer's and he wanted to help. I mean, if there was one word that I could use to describe Peter, it was helpful. He would be the first one in line to help anybody with anything. And so this is really his gift to the world, you know? So I have a little paragraph from the introduction that, you know, kind of sums it up if you want me to yes. share it. Yes. When I began writing, I would read each entry to Peter asking for his permission before publishing it. Peter's dignity is of utmost importance, so his permission was paramount. Many of my posts are wrought with emotion as I depict something that happened or a way that Peter or I felt. When reading the words to Peter, I often struggled through choking on my own words, sobbing at the disbelief of it all. One day I struggled to read the words I would publish. My shoulders shook in disbelief and tears fell in my hands as I hid my face. Peter knelt on one knee behind me as I sat at the dining room table reading. He rubbed my back as I cried and he said, it's okay. It has to be done. It has to be you. So beautiful. Yeah. Such a beautiful soul. So this is really his gift. I just, I just happened to write the words. Yeah. And again, I acknowledge you for, for putting in that, the work um, and involving him, right. And, and having, and fulfilling a mission, it sounds like from over here that he wanted to, this to make a difference for other people. He did. Uh, yeah. And, you know, the dignity piece of it was very important to me that, um, you know, that stay intact for Peter. And that being said, you know, the, the book does include some things that I'd never talked about when he was alive, but they are they, because they're taboo topics and topics that you can't find any information on. Like, what do I do about that? Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, there are several of those in the book that people can find um, information on things that they're struggling about that they may not want to talk to anybody else about. Right. And that's a wonderful um, way to, they might not feel comfortable asking anybody, right. but right. they, you know, it's great that you include that in the book so that they can access information that will help them make decisions and in their day to day life. So it's great right. that you're willing to go there. With those. Well, and there, you know, it's all, you know, I'm certainly no doctor, I'm no lawyer, I'm no therapist, but I did have a beautiful experience 
And, you know, so this is the way that I handled it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all, it's all my opinion on, on what mm -hmm. worked best for me, or maybe what didn't work best as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mistakes and, you know, hits and misses that I made along the way. Mm -hmm. If you were to give one piece of advice, this is a huge question. It might be hard to choose one, but to someone who is a caregiver, right? To a loved one, is there one big thing that you'd throw it's, out? For them? Yeah, that's an, it it's an easy question because it's always the same answer. It's self-care. You cannot pour from an empty cup. You have to take care of yourself. And the problem is that there's so much guilt. Mm involved in that the caregiver doesn't want to walk out the door to go relax or go do something to help their mental health because their loved one is home and they're sick and they're suffering but you know the caregiver is also sick and suffering and needs to be well to be able to take the best care of their loved one that they can so mm -hmm. that's that's it it's paramount and I, um, I know that you do different ways to help people. The book is part of this. Um, yeah. You have an event coming up soon that will help as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yep, sure. It can be found on the Facebook blog. Um, there's an event on Saturday, the 17th in the morning from 10 to noon. And mm -hmm. um, it does include a an autographed copy of the book. So mm -hmm. what it is, it's a two hour block of time where I tell you know a little bit about my story with Peter and then everybody kind of shares uh, their stories. And it's, a, it's just a really safe community for people to discuss what issues they're having now uh, with people who are going through the same thing. So it's, it's sort of a little support network, a little support group, a two hour discussion of whatever it is that's going on with everybody now. And it's not just me, you know, blathering on about, you know, my experience. It's 20 or 30 people giving advice on how they're handling different things. And I always learn something new um, mm -hmm. in these discussions. So I try to hold it one, you know, hold them once a month, maybe once every other month, um, depending on the, the need. Um, but people are always very excited and very happy and they always go over two hours. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go. It's been like <laughs> many <more> hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, wonderful yeah. too, that you're, that this is something that through using virtual, right. It, it, it's, it's on zoom, right. Yeah. Is there, yeah that you can support people in a way that wherever they are, first of all, and second of all, as a caregiver, it's very hard to leave, right? It's very hard to, to get it out. Is. That. That's so it's wonderful that you can meet them where they are and to provide that support um, in that way. And um, okay, so if people want to buy the book, what do they do? How so, best way? It, yep, so there's two ways. You can either go on Amazon and search for it. Oh, hello, Alzheimer's, just like the blog name. And um, the other way, if you're interested in a signed copy, maybe for yourself or a gift, you can find that link on the blog on Facebook. So that is also Facebook, oh, hello, Alzheimer's. Um, and you'll see the link on there. If you're outside the United States, um, there's a separate link. So you can just message me and then I'll send you um, the link for that one. Excellent. Anything else that you want to share with our listeners? Not that I can think of. Um, no, I think that's it. I'm just so grateful, you know, for the overwhelming response so far and the great uh, reviews that we're getting, you know, on Amazon. That's incredible. And just to be able to help caregivers and ultimately the people, you know, who are suffering with Alzheimer's, it just, just really warms my heart. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today, Lisa. It's been an Thanks honor for to share your story. Yeah. Thank you for all your help in, you know, in writing the book and making it happen and making it, making the process go so smoothly. Glad I could help. <laughs> all right. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.